Hell of a start. Um, cool. So uh, first of all, I just wanted to say how excited I am to be here. This venue is amazing. The MCs are amazing. Finland's amazing. Uh, but enough ass kissing, and let's get to it. So uh, I want to talk today about Gatsby and themes. I think themes are going to be kind of a game changer for Gatsby, and I like to think of them as kind of the next evolution for where we see Gatsby going in the future. So uh, who am I? Um, so my, my name is Dustin, like we've said. Um, I work for Gatsby, um, which most of you know the open source product and like framework. That'll, be, that'll always be free and open source. Um, and so I get paid to work on open source. So that's really awesome. Um, I'm from Omaha, Nebraska, which is kind of a city um, in America. Um, so you probably haven't heard of it. No worries, wouldn't have expected you to. Um, so I do work for Gatsby. And to kind of begin setting the stage uh, for like the value of themes, I think it's first to understand um, what Gatsby is, if anyone isn't aware. So Gatsby is a static app generator for React. So if any of you um, have heard of Gatsby, which is hopefully most or all of you, um, you've oftentimes heard it likened to a static site generator. And Gatsby does produce static assets, but I think of it more as a compiler, because what Gatsby produces is like a fully dynamic React application once it hits your, your user's browser. Our kind of marketing slogan is fast in every way that matters. Um, and so what that means to me is that as a developer using Gatsby, you're going to have a great developer experience, and you're going to be able to ship great products um, fast. As a user um, of your application, um, you're going to get a super fast client-side experience because we optimize your application for you and produce static assets. So if you're not sure if you've used a Gatsby app, you definitely have um, if you've been to reactjs.org. It's a great example of an open source, awesome Gatsby application. So I call this thought leader-driven decision making. Um, and so Kent C. Dodds here says, every time I use Gatsby, I love it more. Thank you, Kent. Um, Dan Abramov, to kind of counterbalance, says, don't want to overhype it, but, and no, it has its warts, but Gatsby blog authoring experience is incredible. Hot reloading feels instant. I write posts and tweak styles or layout and see my changes reflected in real time. This was my dream. So we'll come back to this. I'll show some of this hot reloading with some live coding at the end. All right, all right, you know, enough already. I don't want to gush about Gatsby and show all of these like, kind tweets. Um, that's not really what we're here to, to like, talk about today. Uh, I kind of want to get into it. And to get into it, I want to first construct the stage for um, where we've been. And so in order to kind of understand the value themes provide, I think it's first to take a trip down memory lane. So people have probably heard of and used um, a repo called React Boilerplate. So this is the way. Uh, before Create React App, that people would get started with um, a React application. You would clone this repo. React Boilerplate is one of the more popular ones. And you would get like a highly opinionated, um, maybe it matches some of your requirements, React application. So um, for instance, React Boilerplate uh, has Redux, Redux Saga, internationalization, style components, et cetera, et cetera. And it'll also configure Webpack and your build tooling for you. Similarly, you might have heard of React Slingshot, a little less popular still super popular. Again, you basically clone this repo and get started uh, developing on your application. I think this kind of sucked. Um, I really did not like uh, this approach. And I'm not bashing the tools, so I'm just saying I think the approach of cloning and modifying is not ideal. Why? Why do I say that? And so I think uh, the, the first idea here is that we are all builders. As developers, we kind of create um, something out of nothing. You create a meaningful product that was just an idea in your mind, and you make it a reality. And I think this is what draws most of us to development. Similarly, Guillermo here says, React is Legos for adults. And I strongly, strongly agree with this. So if we think of how Legos are, are like a composition unit, you kind of take bits of Legos and construct more meaningful units of whatever the hell you make with Legos. Um, uh, the same idea is true of React. I think that the component model in React is very analogous to Legos. Um, and the whole component model uh, nature of React makes um, uh, writing your applications very much fun and amazing in the same way that playing with Legos and building um, blocks of functionality um, is, is, uh, as well. So why does it suck? Why does cloning a boilerplate uh, not ideal? So cloning a, cloning a boilerplate gives you this kind of baller little Lego house. Um, but when I clone this boilerplate, when I get this this yellow house with this tiny bit of grass and this red roof, I realized that you know maybe my roof 
I want it to be blue. Maybe I want my paint job to be a different color. Maybe I want my windows in a slightly different spot. And so to actually begin making these changes, you kind of have to um, like reverse engineer like where these changes came from and like why they are this way uh, if I'm to actually make meaningful changes. And so this is analogous to if I'm starting with React Boilerplate, uh, I'm getting style of components. Is that really what I want? Um, maybe. So in order to like go actually make those changes, I need to tweak a bunch of files and actually go in and like dive in and kind of like reconstruct the previous builder's intent when really I just want to build things. And so I think it's I think there's some value in being like upfront about things. And for anyone who has used Gatsby, our approach is called starters. They're effectively boilerplates. So I think they're equally limited for the exact same reasons. Um, so for instance, to kind of illustrate this, if you're looking for a starter um, for Firebase with Gatsby, you'll probably find like 5 to 10 to 20 starters, each of which might kind of meet your use case. What you really want is Firebase. You don't want the external stuff. You don't necessarily want TypeScript. You don't necessarily want CSS modules. You don't necessarily want SAS. What you want is Firebase, no more, no less. And so I think um, getting up and running with Gatsby starters like eases that friction. But I think at a certain point when you want to actually make meaningful changes, I think it gets quite a bit harder. So from this basis, from this pain point, from this friction, I think we can uh, more effectively introduce what are called Gatsby themes. So what is a theme? So a theme is a few things. But at its most very basic, it's a reusable block of a Gatsby site. It's some functionality that you can then share and reuse in other contexts. So these blocks can be shared, uh, extended, and then customized. Um, so the, you know, these themes can be just an NPM package install away, and you can get some functionality. And then you can tweak that functionality. You can extend that functionality. And of course, you can share it. These blocks can be purely data-driven. So Gatsby uses GraphQL as its data layer, and we uh, consume that GraphQL API at build time. Um, and so uh, themes can just purely set up this data layer for you to like, interact with. Um, th these blocks can be purely UI-driven. So a component library, a design system, et cetera, could be just straight UI, straight React components. Um, or it could be so some combination of both, depending on what your use case for a theme is. That has answered nothing, Dustin. Like, what? Still, what is a theme? You know, who knows? Um, so, to kind of uh, continue attacking this point, um, so a Gatsby site is composed of these disparate blocks of uh, functionality. You have a config. Gatsby has a config API where you can set things up. You have data, which is the GraphQL layer. You have assets, images, CSS, um, fonts, etc. Gatsby will optimize these for you and produce like a highly optimized application. Plugins uh, extend Gatsby in meaningful ways. Components, that building block, that React Lego. Uh, all of these are unified, compiled, and optimized by Gatsby as your web compiler. Now, this is uh, pre-themes. With the introduction of themes, this kind of model shifts a little bit. So we still are going to have our config file. Uh, we're going to need some way to set up these themes. We're still probably likely going to have some data source um, or several data sources, so it could be markdown. And then each of these little themes is going to be some block of functionality that produces like a smaller subset of a Gatsby application. And then so these smaller subsets of Gatsby applications can then be unified and merged into one um, uh, Gatsby application that meets the exact use cases you want. So what are those use cases? So I don't want to overstate here, but really I think it's kind of anything. Um, so Gatsby themes kind of scale from like a single component to uh, an entire Gatsby application because a theme can do anything that a Gatsby application can do. You can do anything you want in a Gatsby theme. So let's get a little more concrete because that's a little bit vague. Um, blogs, of course. Of course, if people have heard of Gatsby, you've, they've, you've probably seen tweets that I just re rewrote my blog in Gatsby on a Saturday and migrated off Medium, which is great. We hope everyone does that. But I think there is kind of like a little counterbalance here. So I love this meme from Mark. Um, so Webpack, Babel, TypeScript, React, Emotion. What we produce is a static blog with three posts. Like we've way over-engineered this thing. And like I do very much empathize and think this meme is hilarious. Uh, but the idea here is that when you're using uh, Gatsby and when you're producing a blog, you don't need, necessarily need to use all of these technologies or even know all of them. You can structure your, your static blog however you want using whatever technologies you want. So agree with Mark. It's kind of, it is kind of funny to think how like, over-engineered some of these blogs are. Um, but I think the end result is a great application that your users will love. 
documentation. This is a really big one. So uh, I'm happy to, to report that as of like a week or two ago, there is a docz Gatsby theme. And so I think this has been something people have really wanted for a while. Basically, people want to be able to write Markdown and then get like an application from that. So you can kind of co-locate co your component library with documentation. And then you get you know, the, the, the self-documenting code that you want with Markdown right alongside your component files. So the idea is that you install a Gatsby theme, you add Markdown to a content folder, and then profit. So there's also a functional base of these. And I think this is where Gatsby themes get really interesting. So a Gatsby theme could be e-commerce based. You might have a Gatsby, uh, Gatsby theme for Shopify, or for Stripe, or for PayPal, or whatever e-commerce platform you want. And that, that platform can set up the like, data layer, and it can also expose a UI library, um, a shopping cart, or a shopping page screen. Uh, that you can then use and just pop into your application. Um, adding search, this is a, a big one as well. So you might want to add search to your static application, um, and you can do so with the Gatsby theme. Uh, it could tie into Algolia, or it could tie into some other search uh, provider to add, a, to add a component, to add the data layer, and then give you this meaningful feature. Of course, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a UI component. Um, so you might, ex you might provide a Gatsby navigation theme. This might set up like a sidebar. This might set up like a breadcrumb trail. Uh, whatever component you're looking for, uh, you could do so with a Gatsby theme, because it's just React. Then, of course, design systems. So kind of a callback to earlier, um, Gatsby is great for design systems. And I think themes are going to even make this even easier. Oh, and these slides are a Gatsby theme, which is kind of cool. So check it out, MDX deck Gatsby theme, uh, built with Gatsby and uh, Markdown MDX. So to kind of bring this whole thing home, um, there's this really great um, uh, talk from uh, Brad Frost about atomic design. And he kind of proposes this model for how we like structure our applications. Our applications are composed of atoms, kind of liken it to a component. Uh, molecules are composed of atoms. Organisms are composed of, mo of, of molecules. Uh, and then the end result is that you have templates and pages. And so I think that Gatsby themes encapsulate every layer of this and kind of get you from simple component to full-blown page and everything in between. So to kind of like bring this all home, if we think back to our Lego house, the kind of mental shift with Gatsby themes is that you still have your building block. Now you have themes, which is kind of like a collection of blocks that you can use to construct your house. And the end result is the exact house that you want, the exact app that you need based on these uh, distinct functionalities. So when are Gatsby themes available? When can I use them? So right now, they're exposed behind a flag. You can use them today. Um, so if anyone has used Gatsby, we have a, a programmatic API exposed with Gatsby config. And you uh, just use the key um, underscore underscore experimental themes to use these experimental themes. So in the evolutionary life cycle of where Gatsby themes are at, we can kind of use an analogy to like a human life cycle. And so uh, infant to um, old, uh, Gatsby themes are kind of in their toddler phase. I would say they're in their tremendous threes. Um, we're still kind of refining these, and we need uh, your help in refining where themes can go. So uh, at this point, I think that talk is cheap. I think that a demo is effective to kind of bring all of this home. So this would be a kind of quick demo, but I think it's really helpful to kind of show some of the ideas I've been talking about. All right. So um, this is a Gatsby config file. It's just Node.js. Um, and so if I want to start using a theme, what I can do so is I can use this experimental themes API. It's just an array of themes. Um, we have a specific um, structure for this. So uh, the keyword is resolve. So I actually created a Gatsby theme React Finland. We'll give it some options. And then let's get this guy running. All right. OK, so this is Gatsby Theme React Finland. Uh, I have to give a huge shout out to the organizers for making everything open source. Um, so it wasn't really hard to get this set up. Uh, I love the wave pattern. And so this is kind of like a rewrite, of some, to some extent, of um, the React Finland site. So we can scroll through. Uh, we can see it kind of works the same. I didn't, go through the I didn't go through implementing everything. So I think this kind of gets the idea across. Um, I did. I would also like to make one note that 
I made sponsors in H2 uh, and kept the other things H3s. <laughs> so shout out accessibility. Um, and then so uh, from this, like, you can kind of see what a Gatsby theme can be used for. So a Gatsby theme can kind of be used for a full application. But this full application can also be extended further still. And so I'd like to show how to do that. So um, in the same way that we can use kind of the, these like reusable blocks of functionality, we can set up a Gatsby theme for blogs. Shocking. So it's called Gatsby theme blog. It has a few options. Um, one of the key ones is that it has an adapter. So basically, you define what type of data you're going to be using for your blog. So here, I'm going to use Markdown. It takes a content directory. So here, my blog is going to be powered by a local folder full of Markdown files. And we'll just use path.join and give it a path to the blog. Finally, I need to uh, create a content folder. What did I call it? Blog? A blog folder. And so we'll create a couple markdown files. We'll say hello world.md. We'll give it a title. This is uh, called front matter. It's basically a way to expose um, data to your markdown file. So we'll say hello world. And then finally, hello from React Finland demo. So let's start this up. And then let's refresh. And so nothing really changed. Like, what did I do here? So a Gatsby theme has created a page structure for me. So now I have this blog post listing. And uh, I can click through, and I can see the actual template that's powering this blog. Of course, if we hearken back to uh, Dan Abramov's tweet, um, we have hot reloading. So if I want to add a code snippet, so we'll import React from React. We'll export a default function that returns hello world. Let's save. And then it's immediately reflected in uh, the left side of the, of the application. And so um, there's one final piece I want to show, uh, which is called component shadowing. So this right here is a component. And in Gatsby themes, um, you might have like a, a fair question, like, how do I change this component? And how you can do so is you can actually just replace it. So if we create a folder structure, we'll call it Gatsby theme blog, because that's the a component we're overriding. It's in the components directory. And then it's going to be a blog post preview. So we'll import React from React. We'll export default. And then just to make sure it's working, we'll call it null. And so what we should see here is basically an empty blog post page because we've, we've overridden a component that was serving as some data layer, and now we're just returning null. So um, doesn't seem super crazy yet, but obviously, we can do whatever we want here. It's just React. So I'm going to use CSS and JS. You don't have to, though. You can use whatever you want. Um, we'll create a container. We'll make it obvious that it um, is showing up. So we'll add some parts, some padding a margin, and then a border. And then let's use this component. All right, we save. And I used the wrong term. And it works just like we'd expect. But you might have a caveat here. Well, this thing isn't working. Well, we need to tie into props. This is still being used in context of the consuming page. And so it's going to. Um, it's going to pass the same props it was to the previous component. And then now we can see our blog post. We can add whatever we want here with the exposed props to um, you know, basically tweak entirely exactly what we want. So let's bring this all the way back home. All right, so um, first. I think that uh, a shout out is, is well deserved to all the amazing people who are building themes. So some, uh, most of these people are on the Gatsby team, and we're so glad to have them here. They've been doing awesome work. Uh, I think themes constitute an evol evolutionary leap for Gatsby, and we can't wait to see what you'll build, uh, build with Gatsby. Thank you very much.